Hi there, YouTube. <laughs> Mark for here. TJ Thomas, he, uh, in one of his last videos, he actually uh, touched up on a subject that certain people had uh, some issues with him comparing a game of Galaxians, or as he uh, calls it, Galaxian, on. Uh, <laughs> on uh, a ZX Spectrum Next and I believe an Atari 8-bit system and people gave all sorts of reasons why uh, it couldn't or shouldn't be compared and why it could be compared and yeah like like uh, Thomas said in uh, in his video it all depends you know it all depends on what you want to compare what the the items are that you want to compare uh, and I just love to compare I love to compare ports uh, I think a lot of older gamers we all we've all grown up with Pong with uh, arcade ports on our 2600 or Odyssey 2's video packs home computer systems you know um, buggy boy on the uh, in the arcade with the three screen uh, ultra wide setup or the stand up arcade with just a single screen. Can you compare those two? Well, vastly different hardware setups, but the gameplay in, in essence is the same. And you could also state that for actually Buggy Boy. Buggy Boy on the Commodore 64, the Atari ST, and Amiga, they, were, they are all very faithful ports of Buggy Boy. And of course, the Commodore 64 is a very low powered compared to, to the arcade or the Amiga or the Atari ST. The Atari ST and the Amiga versions are pretty much identical, also probably because the hardware of both systems is actually quite, quite similar. And you can also say that, for example, OutRun, OutRun in the arcade back in the day was a fantastic system, a sit-down cabinet with a 4x3 screen where uh, and stereo speakers, you had a hydraulic and a non-hydraulic version. Uh, could you compare with both? Well, if you say, well, you know, the hydraulic version is the, the bee's knees, you know, but um, yeah, of course. And the 8-bit versions that came out of OutRun in no way, shape or form really compared well to the uh, arcade original just because well you know the the red ferrari would be a, a red smear the sound soundtrack would not be the same but if you put it into context the systems that it ran on uh, were quite vastly different from the capabilities of the uh, of the original arcade so yeah, if you do take a look at, for example, OutRun on the Sega Master System, the MSX, might be pretty similar. Um, Commodore 64 has a version which I had a very hard time to digest. Uh, and for me, that was, it didn't compare favorably for me, favorably uh, for me. Uh, for some it did, but for me it didn't. and. For the ones that it compared favorably to the arcade uh, with, uh, they point out that the speed of the uh, Commodore 64 version is really fast, which it is, it's really fast, but the way they achieve the graphics is uh, a bit like Forbidden Forest. <laughs> uh, very chunky, eight by 8 pixel scrolling, uh, you know, just a very low tech approach uh, visually to the whole thing. And uh, for me, it didn't convey the same smooth racing experience. Uh, MSX version also didn't compare favorably because it didn't have that very smooth racing experience. Uh, the Spectrum version of OutRun that actually visually is very impressive and it has a very smooth gameplay but it's a lot slower than um, than the uh, original but it's a very good game 
from a technical uh, standpoint, but I think the um, the arcade ports that actually use the arcade code on uh, later generation optical drive uh, systems actually uh, they ran outrun uh, better than the previous versions and I prefer actually Outrun 2. Outrun 2 uh, and Coast to Coast. Actually I, I do like racing games but racing games pre-polygon uh, without proper sprite scaling. I think proper sprite scaling games, racing games, you know that's where racing games for me become um, interesting. I mean I played a ton of pit stop but that was just compared to today's racing games it's just crazy or pole position I think a lot of uh, a lot of kids these days if they are <laughs> presented with pole position they would just you know they would just scream and run away or something like that you know but f for people growing up with Pong a proper pole position on the 2600 could, could actually be quite a fun experience so it's all rel relative it's all contextual. Uh, what you can compare, you can't compare. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that's just basically up to you, isn't it? The the one creating the video, the one doing the comparison. And uh, there's this proverb: there, uh, that, that, that there's always multiple angles to look at things. And I think that's just right. You know, you can you can compare whatever you want and we can all have different opinions and if we all would have the same opinion life and discussing and you know communication in general would be very tedious and boring and would have no point whatsoever um, to illustrate that you can compare the heck out of anything is uh, I've added a little video behind this waffle where I took a look at Centipede on the Commodore 64. You'd think that was just the one from Atari Software, you know, the, the big um, first party arcade port. But there's actually gazillion, 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 bazillion Centipede clones out there for the Commodore 64. Some compare favorably, others don't or just are so out there or different that perhaps comparison, uh, comparison, uh, comparisons, comparing uh, them is something that you should not perhaps resembles. <laughs> That's how I, how I, uh, so I don't compare or I do, but the game, the games shown do resemble more or less centipede. So, so yeah, I, I pretty much, agree with Thomas and I think people giving others a hard time because they they yeah just just live in that live I'd say so well let's go check out centipede resemble centipede on the Commodore 64 there's just there's there might be more than one centipede version on the Commodore 64 there might let's go check it out <laughs> 